And welcome back to Familiar Faces. This is our second show, so I'm giving you guys another lop. See if you can guess who it is. That's right, it's Mallow from Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. In 1996, Squaresoft made Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars for the Super Nintendo. Mario is premiered to the world of RPGs. Role-playing. It's not just for the socially ostracized and mentally unhinged anymore. It was a Mario game like no other. It was in 3D, had intertwining stories, and you can play as multiple characters at the same time, like Bowser and Peach. Of course, the iconic character of the game is Geno, and I guess I can see why. You see, Gino is a mechanical puppet possessed by an entity from the stars, with the access to the power of the universe itself. Mallow is kind of a whiny little wuss who spent most of his life knee-deep in swamp scum. But no Luigi! This wasn't the beginning of Luigi's decline in the series, but it was the first time I said to myself, Wow, Luigi's not in this game. Not only was it Mario's first RPG, it was the second Mario game not to be developed by Nintendo. What was the first, you ask? I don't know! What? Ah! Take it away! Take it away, it burned! Mario RPG was also the only Mario game to include the SA1 chip, one of a series made to boost the processing power of the Super Nintendo, allowing the 24-bit system to play 32-bit games. Now that's playing with power. Okay, here's the storyline. Bowser captures Princess Peach again, and Mario heads off to save her. But right before Mario defeats Bowser, a giant sword falls from the sky and into Bowser's castle, throwing Bowser, Mario, and Princess Peach in different directions. This is work in the Smithy Gang, an organization bent on taking. Of course! You just couldn't hold it in, could you? I hope you're happy. On the contrary, I mourn. Okay, to make a long story short, bad guy, good guys, seven stars, mamma mia. So a little bit into his journey, Mario runs into Mallow. Mallow is a tadpole. He's puffy and white, wears trousers over his newly developed mid-morphosis legs, and can split in half while controlling the weather. Just like a real tadpole. Actually, Mallow is not a tadpole. He's a cloud creature that was found as a baby by the philosopher Frogfucius, who raised him as his grandson. But I'm getting ahead of myself. You see, Mario comes across Mallow in the Mushroom Village. Mallow has just had his ass handed to him by a raptor with a top hat named Croco. Mario, being the saint that he is, offers to help Mallow get his stolen item back, via his own brand of vigilante plumber justice. After they beat Croco, they head back to Mallow's pond, where he learns that Frogfucius found him in a basket floating down the river. Hey, that sounds familiar. Anyway, the frog decided to raise the child as his own grandson. Now that sounds familiar too. So Mario steps up and offers to take him along on his quest. What? You'll let me come along on your life-threatening escapades for the minuscule chance that I might find the parents that were careless enough to let me get washed away and forget all about this kind old man that raised me? I'd have to be crazy not to jump on this. So Mallow is the first of many to join Mario on his crusade to recover the stars. But what does Mallow bring to the party? What's his expertise, his forte, his free bird, if you will? Mallow has a ton of special moves associated with the weather. So yeah, he's, um, he's, uh... I am the Black Mage. I cast the spells that makes the people fall down. Of course you are. A few star pieces later, Mario and the game come across Nimbus Land, a continent floating in the clouds at Mallow's homeland. Turns out he's the long-lost prince, and he must stop an imposter prince and his boss. Um, who was she again? She was, was she corpulent? Very corpulent? No, no, she's just really round. That's right, Valentina. You see, it's her plan to have the fake Mallow marry her and become the queen of Nimbus Land, because he passes off as a perfect prince. The Mushroom Kingdom, the naivete epicenter of existence. But her application of the Mile High Club is rejected when Mario and the real Mallow show up to beat her and her boobs. <laughs> Get it? Boob? Like, like the bird? But also the body part? Which hers are huge? Now I know it sounds like I'm fixating on this, but apparently so did Squaresoft. 
because when you land a hit on other monsters, they jump back or shiver or bend down. Land a special attack on Valentina and her breasts jiggle. That doesn't even make sense. I hit you with a giant star. I didn't sidearm you in the chesticles. Whether you found this arousing or laughable, this battle will have you using honeys like singles at a strip club. At the end of the game, Mallet became the rightful prince of Nimbus Land. Honor and fear were heaped upon his name, and in time he became king. However, more struggles would there be to overcome, and these stories will too be told in time. But not really. Because Super Mario RPG was the only game that Mallow ever appeared in. But he can take solace in knowing that this game opened the door to the other Mario RPG titles, and a menagerie of other one-shot characters that will also never be seen. Oh, that reminds me. I would really appreciate it if a few of you would drop by my website and sign my petition. Thanks. Plus, I consider Super Mario World and Mario RPG perfect bookend to the franchise's Super NES console life. Although some critics didn't think it was so great. Sure it was a new step for Mario into the realm of RPG and 3D, but the complaint that keeps popping up is that it didn't really add anything to the genre, and it was too easy. They may have had a point. This game may have been a breeze for hardcore RP gamers. The other complaint I hear is the storyline was too cliché and ridiculous. Really? Too ridiculous? I suppose it was a departure from the genuinely human story of an Italian plumber that travels to a magical world to save a princess from a giant lizard turtle. But you all have to admit, it was way better than... Great! I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos! Bomb, 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 bomb! It was just a really fun and well-made game, featuring a cast of both classical and new characters who have since then become classics. And that's Mallow, the little puff with all the right stuff. Oh, by the way, I've been calling you Mellow for the past five years. Sorry. Still